In this video, we will be discussing generating 2D views of 3D models. If you'd like to follow along with this video, please open the file 1401 Generating 2D Views of 3D Models Mechanical.dwg located in the training folder as discussed in the Working with this Dataset video. We're going to talk about three commands in this video. We're going to talk about the Solid View command, the Solid Drawing command, and the Solid Profile command, and how they can help you generate the plans you need to create when you're ready to plot. The solid view command creates orthographic and auxiliary views in a layout from your 3D solid model. So it is recommended to set your visual style to 2D wireframe. That way, when you generate the layouts, they will look the way that you want them to be and not a shaded version of your model. We'll go to the layout tab. I already have a pre-existing border. And these commands are located in the home tab, modeling panel, more tools option. And then we have the solid view, solid drawing, and solid profile command. Let's start with the solid view command. So the first thing we want to start with is the UCS option. This will get us our top view, and then we can get the other orthographic views as we need to from the top view that we create. We'll click on UCS. It asks us for a named UCS, so if you happen to have one, you could actually use that. In this case, we'll just use World, which will set it to the top view. It then prompts us for a view scale. So this will be the scale of the viewport. In this case, one to one will fit, but obviously you will play around with the numbers to see what scales fit for your design. Then AutoCAD tells us, specify the view center where you want this to be located. So I want this to be located about right there. And what's great is it shows you a nice little preview and you can keep clicking to define where you want the center of that viewport to be. Notice how snapping has turned off so that you don't accidentally snap somewhere and put it into a spot where you may or not want it to be. So because this is simply a viewport, you can basically just put it wherever you feel you need it. Once you're done, press enter. And now we need to define the actual rectangle that is the viewport. So I'll pick down here and up here to compensate for some dimensioning that we might do. Once we're done, notice how it prompts you for a view name. So we'll call this one top. And you'll see in a second what this is actually going to do. Now we can do an orthographic view because we already have our top view. And then what you want to do is you want to snap to the side that you want to show. So in this case, I want to start with the front view. So I'll go ahead and pick here. Notice how it locks in ortho, but you can move it if you want to, but it's just aiding you in making sure it lines up properly. So we'll go ahead and pick the view center like so and notice how it automatically appears. You could keep redefining it if you want to, to basically put it to where the location that you want. I'll put this down here, and then I will press enter. And now I'll do a nice big window so we can have some dimensioning that we need to do. And now I'm ready to give it a name. So we'll call this one front, press enter, and now we wanna do a side view of this one here. So let's go ahead and do the ortho option again. We'll pick this side of this viewport, Note that you could actually come from another viewport if you wanted to as well. But we'll go ahead and pick this one. Then it prompts us to specify the center for the viewport. We'll pick here. Notice how it shows it to us. Again, you can keep picking to define the location where you want it to be. When you're done, press enter and then define a rectangle of how you want that viewport to look. And we'll give this one a name of side. Press enter. And if let's say this is it for now, we'll press enter again and this ends the command. So what actually happened? What did this command do for us except rotate the view for the model? What this command did for us was it created layers that are unique to each viewport so we could actually do dimensioning and do some hidden lines and visible lines as well. We're gonna run the solid drawing command next and this will create hidden line views and sections from the views. It only works in viewports that have been created with the solid view command. Together they enable you to quickly dimension a model in the standard orthographic views. So we'll go ahead and run the solid drawing command and we'll go ahead and then pick our viewport, press enter and notice what happened. We'll see this in a second here when we go to model space. I'll press enter again, click, press enter, press enter again, click the viewport and press enter. Notice how we're automatically getting hidden lines and we're getting the correct geometry as we need to. If we go to the name view drop down and select the view manager, you will notice it actually creates some name views for us called front side and top. So it's actually using these names to generate these views as well. Let's go to our model tab and let's see what actually did happen. So what actually happened was it actually created section views. These are actually line work projected onto the different views based on the viewports orientation. That's pretty cool. It does it for you automatically. Then what you can do is go into your layout and we will use the actual layers to then dimension our drawings. So I want to do the top view right now. So I'll go ahead and select the top dim layer. And of course, note how you can change the color if you need to change to a color to plot a specific way. I'll go ahead and double click inside here and notice how the view that's being used is actually the custom model view of top. Again, this is really cool. It just does it for you as a backup. You can always come back to this view. And before we actually start the dimension tool, I want to actually lock this viewport. 
I'll do this for all of them. I'll just click once in here, lock it. Click once in there, lock it. That way, if we zoom in and zoom out, we're not affecting our actual viewport scale, which is of course what you don't want to do as the annotative objects will not scale automatically. I'll go ahead and just simply dimension some stuff up here. But again, as you can see, this sets it up for you automatically. It allows you to do all kinds of really cool stuff that would take you a lot of time if you had to do it manually. We'll go into this view, and we'll go ahead and set our layer to the front dash dim view. And we'll go ahead and dimension some stuff up here. Again, the really cool thing, it has VP frozen all the other layers that are necessary to make the view the way you want to. If I look at the layer dropdown, you'll notice that the M-Obj2 layer is frozen in each of the viewports, hiding the model. So it just allows us to basically minimize what we don't want to see in each viewport, and then allow us to plot what we do want to see. So that's a really cool functionality. Now again, just to point this out in model space, it actually will draw those dimensions in those planes, because it has to, to allow the views to be seen at those projections. Now what you can also do, is you can do this manually as well, if I wanted to create a different view of my viewport, I can actually go to the Layout tab, Rectangle, Rectangular Viewport, and let's just make a rectangular viewport like so. And so now what I can actually do is I can actually double click inside here, and I'll change my UCS to WCS, and I could pick whatever projection or view I want to actually pick for the viewport here. Then you would set your scale, so I'll set this to 1 to 1, and then I'll lock my viewport, and if I go to the Home tab, Modeling panel, I can actually use the command called Solid Profile. This command will create a 2D drawing and wireframe of solids in any viewport, regardless of how the viewport was created. So I'll just go ahead and run this command, select our 3D solid model. Again, I'm inside the viewport in model space. Press Enter, and then it prompts you, do you want to display hidden profile lines on separate layers? I'll say yes. Do you want to project profile lines onto a plane? I'll say yes. Tangential lines, you bet. And then now I've got those on there. Now it looks like they're not, but what I can do is go to the my layer dropdown and viewport freeze m obj 2 And now, as you can see, I've actually got those lines in there automatically. Now with this command, it actually creates a block, but it does put them on their own unique layer. And so I can actually then freeze or thaw those layers in each of the different viewports if I need to. Then of course I could just dimension these up. Again, really cool tools to help you lay out your models and get the design done ready for plotting. This concludes this video discussing generating 2D views of 3D models.